All right, so he's sitting up when we park, which is really common. So I'm at a 10. We've got someone who just pulled up next to us. So we'll see if something happens, but I'm gonna try to do a down, down. Good. And I'm just holding down the button at a 10. Basically, if I'm under mm, a 15, I'm holding down usually for a second. So I just undid my seatbelt down. So you see the anticipation? <laughs> it's pretty common for him. So I just have to take it step by step. Seatbelt, pause a second. Each step, you just make sure he's in a down. He's much better than he than he was. He would fly out of the door like crazy. <laughs> but by breaking down each step, checking his energy along the way, you know, we curb most of that. There's his little face. You can kind of see it. So I'm just gonna tap at a 25. I don't necessarily need him to, no, no, down. <laughs> to magically lay down um, through the door, although that eventually is the goal. He will do it sometimes, but I've got some construction people next to me, so I figure there's no way hearing the construction noises he would, but I do want him to back away from the door, so I was at a 25. I'm just pausing for a second. So same thing when I go and pick up the leash, a lot of dogs will pop up, so especially because they're on the leash, so I'm just grabbing it. I gotta do his back up. Good boy. There we go. And I didn't expect to deal with construction right outside the car. So we'll see if he flies out. If he does, turn around and go back in. So I want him to look at an open door, just like every other threshold, and not just shoot out. Let's go. Hey, that was nice. There wasn't a lot of pressure on the leash. Like he's not opposition reflex, you know, pushing in. You wanna go potty bed? It's like perfect spot. There we go. And now we are just going to walk away slowly. <laughs> Do some turns, let's go. Good. I'm gonna turn into him. Good, you got some little eye glance. We're not gonna move on until I kind of get a better handle on how he feels about the construction. You can see him wrinkly forehead concerned. Heels a little in front. Heel. Let's go. Good. That's better. We're gonna do a little more though before we move on to the rest of the park. Okay, so pretty good. So you can see him pushing. So heel, and I'm gonna slow down. So my goal is to not use the leash at all. And what am I at, 34? My goal is to not use the leash unless I absolutely have to, or if I feel he needs a reminder, like we're in a new situation, because this doesn't do anything for him. <laughs> he could care less about it. We're an off-leash dog up ahead. So I'm gonna pay a little extra attention. I scrolled up on my e-collar as well. Oh yeah, he put a leash on his dog, so that tells me he has no control. So we will see, I mean off-leash control. Um, so we'll see if we get some reactivity. It's a Malinois. <laughs> so see? Heel. And I scrolled up because of the dog. I'm at a 50. Now what I do is I do slow down just the tiniest bit. Oh yeah, the dog is good. Just wild, as most Malinois are. So what I do is I, I do tend to slow down to give that physical cue. Um but I wanna try not to use the leash. Oh, here's another dog. Watch his ears. Nice, looking good. 
See how jumpy he got the sound of that car door? Heel. So I slow down a little. I say heel and I tap the button. And I stay slow for five to 10 paces usually. Now, if he keeps pushing, I'll give a little, just a little reminder. No big deal. Just a little, little reminder along with my tap and my verbal. But if that doesn't work, then I go to uh, engagement mode. So what does engagement work? Haven't talked about this in a while because I have so many videos on it. So let's do it with the big guy. It's a good, a good time to do it. You don't want to always do it when the dog is struggling. You also want to practice it <laughs> when it's easy. Now, I'm just going to freeze for a second in the shade. Good. Now, he's looking at some dogs right now. I have a choice. I can just kind of do this and reset him in a sit, right? Or if I'm back here a little bit, don't just look behind you the other way. <laughs> and I have this, I can go heel, do a little circle and reset him. See where my hand is behind me? So he doesn't quite have that full leverage, no? I still had to use my leg though. It's a little feisty chihuahua running around on a flexi leash. Okay, anyway, let's talk about engagement work. Some of the time on engagement work, I like to give a little bit more leash. That way you can kind of give the dog more room to make a choice, to make a bad choice. Um, so you can teach them, you know, the right choice. Can't do this, do that with this, this big guy. Don't have a lot of leverage over him. He, uh, hang on, there's a, two dogs coming behind us that are out of control. No, good, good. Glanced at me again, so just a firm good. I'm just gonna shift my weight back because I do not trust what I'm looking at. It's a bulldog and another dog that, no, no control. Good job, bud. I let that one go. I'd already tapped twice in a row. He is not gonna react to them. And so I let the third one go. Judgment call, guys. He is not uh, a reactive dog to other dogs. It's more people, heel. He it just gets really nervous about dogs barking or making a lot of noise. And then he'll kind of redirect that <laughs> on people a lot of times, just the intensity. Okay, anyway, back to my engagement work. So, I like to have a loose leash, but this guy, because of his fear issues, and he is tough as nails, so I don't have a lot of leverage with prong or even with e-collar. And even though this is a mini remote, he's on a boss. I just did the mini remote because it's easier to hold. Okay, so, we're gonna start with really looking at my body language because I am not gonna give a loose leash. So I'm gonna bend at the waist a little bit and slow to give, <laughs> he stepped on my foot, to give him a cue that I'm gonna turn with my physicality, with my body language. I'm not gonna just do a turn like this because even if he was, he wasn't paying attention, he was looking at a big scary truck. Even if he was paying attention, if I don't give him a little slack, you know, I'd end up pulling him unless I really craned my, I don't know, my side back. So, I'm gonna bend at the waist. Good, see, I don't need leash. I didn't need an e-collar tap, nothing. And he moved with me beautifully. I wanna give him a chance to do that without feeling me pulling him around. I'm gonna do that again. Good, tap, that was a tap because he doubled back to look at a guy that got out of his truck. So that was a tap. All right, now the next one just looks like a stop, a soft stop. There was a little tension on the leash. I freeze my arm right here. I don't say anything. Heel, he should auto set. Good. Heel. I'd rather there be no tension on the leash. I'm gonna scroll down to a 10 because 50 is too high for just a sit. Unless he's looking at a dog. I don't know, we'll see. There we go, it's because of the dog. Good, he knows what to do. I'll say sit and add leash 
if I need to, if he doesn't listen to my my e-collar cue. But look, now he's ahead of me a little bit. Heel. So he saw me walk right into his face, get out of my way. And I keep my arm to my side, or I might put it back a bit if I feel like the dog's gonna go out in front of me. And it's not this teardrop. That's not, it's not, not a turn, not an efficient turn. It is, you walk, there's, there's a Malinois. You get the dog out of your way. Get out of my way, dude. That's what you're telling your dog. Then they start to pay more attention. This is the biggest thing we do for dogs that are really pushing ahead. So like when we get into a construction spot and he freezes up or he looks like he's about to bolt and he's pulling ahead to get home, if we're going in that direction, let's go. That's what happened the other day. It's nothing but tap and move in. And then the reason I've got pressure back on the leash if I need it is because if he's out here, I can't do the turn into him efficiently. A lot of times they just, the boy, I know. <laughs> a lot of times they just spin out, you know, in front of you. Um, he's kind of a big lug, so he did move sideways. But if, if they're only a little ahead of you, you can do guidance back and, hey, get out of my way. And then see, then be more gentle about it when they're already in a good position, but you know they're anxious or pushy. Yeah, good job. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. He got out of my way, you know. So you start to practice this stuff. You don't just practice it when it's hard. That's a tap. You practice it when it's easy. That's a tap because he's looking at a group of people. People are by far his biggest thing. But something about dogs barking makes him so nervous and anxious that he'll redirect that energy a lot of times onto other people. Or um, he'll or just pull like a freight train on the walk. Um, he's also growled at dogs. He's reacted in crate to dogs. So even though we've got pretty good behavior out on a walk with another good dog, that's still a lot of emotional loading that I have to keep in check. Look at this. Oh, we got barked at. It's minor though. Good job, it's a pitiful bark. Anyway guys, one more thing I'll add. You speed up your pace a bit. And this one's hard to do with this big guy. Speed up the pace and then just freeze. Gosh, he's, he's just so strong. I'm gonna go higher, try it again. Heel, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Again, watching a guy get out of his car. Let's go. Speed up and freeze. So my goal is to tap the button right before he hit the end of the leash. That's why he was so much softer that time. Um, Cause I know, you know, he's not going, he's not paying enough attention to stop with me nicely. Heel, so it saves my shoulder. <laughs> Let's go. That was a tap. You saw him close his mouth. <laughs> Cause he's so focused on this big guy that got out of his car. And he's focused in the opposite direction. That's why I turned with him on the outside. But if the guy was in front of oh, us, seeing behind me, if the guy was in front of us, so he's like looking over this way, I would move into him. Basically telling him, I don't need, I don't, I don't need him. Let's go, let's go to be worried. And I got his back. Nope, let's go. Good job. A lot of times we love the, the loose leash work is so important because it lets the dog chill out and get some context and not have to be so stifled. But when you're outside with a dog that could drag you down, you, you can't give them any leverage. And so these are silly little tweaks that we make and until you feel more confident. I feel more confident with him now. I can let him go to the end of the leash, but not my first four days walking him. <laughs> I am not ashamed to say it. So especially with some of this light construction, no, he's going to want to bolt in and I was ready on the dial, tap the button on my NO, now I'm going to fully open it, still, oh he's still pushing it, he's like I'll sit, but man, good, place, 
I just use a place for the card. Get, get that butt up. <laughs> Good job. Down. Looking at the construction. Oh, I'm a little too high for that. Let's go down. Down. Oh, you knew. You knew. Come here. Right here. Lay down. A little bit of whining. There you go. Stressful. <laughs> 